Hey, this is Judah Mantel from SceneForge Studio, and in this video, I'm going to showcase kind of some upcoming functionality to SceneForge, mainly revolving around the chroma key green screen functionality, the compositing, which I know I showed off in a couple other videos, but this one's going to be different because one, it shows the near final version, and two, it has me talking over it, whether you like that or not. So let's go over this. I have this very basic scene here. It has this photo scan of some cave from Sketchfab, color light checker, which I'll delete a single camera, and then this uh, video surface. Now this is a new object type for this upcoming feature, and it essentially allows you to just project footage onto a surface in the world, specifically used for chroma key. So that's what we'll talk about today. All right, so I changed the lighting just so I can demonstrate this a little bit better. Obviously, this is not perfect. It doesn't look great, but it shows off this feature in a better way. So we have this surface here, and when I select it, we have the option to configure the chroma key footage. There we go. And what this button does is it opens up this menu where you can choose an input source. So you can either use a live camera feed plugged in through a capture card or USB cable or a pre-recorded video clip, which is what I'm going to use in this example. So we're using a video of a businessman talking against the green screen. And if I play that, you can see it just like that. Now I'm going to turn off all of these uh, sliders here. So you can see we have the green background. I can either manually select the key color or just select it with the eyedropper. And if I increase the cutoff, there we go, as well as the feathering. And let's just increase the despill around the edges. So now we have a pretty solid key of this guy walking around. Now, the reason why I chose this footage specifically is because unlike other videos on YouTube, he doesn't stand in the center point. He kind of walks back and forth, which is really interesting, and we can use that for this example. So I'm going to click Finished. Now that that footage is kind of set up in the background, all I have to do is click Activate Surface, and now that gets projected onto the surface. Now what's cool is that because this is a 3D object, it does respond to lighting appropriately. So if I were to take this light bulb and move it, you'll see he does get illuminated, and he also does cast shadows into the world. And if the ground was reflective, or if he was standing on something with ray trace reflections turned on, you would see his reflection in the ground. So you can do some really cool things that blend your live action footage into your 3D worlds in a much better way than just kind of sticking them on top of each other. So uh, now that we have this here, I'll leave it like this. I'll turn the intensity down. If you don't want the character to be affected by lights in the scene, you can turn on Use Unlit Material. And you'll see now he's self-illuminating, so he just doesn't respond to light. But I happen to turn this off in this example. I think it looks much more realistic. Now the next two options are body tracking and face camera when active. These are some really cool things that I'll go over now. So if I were to, let's say, go to my shoot mode and take my camera here, this looks pretty good. You know, there's a certain suspension of disbelief that you're going to have to get over because the footage isn't perfect and all that stuff. But if I were to move left and right, you know, it looks like the character is in the scene. But of course, there comes a certain threshold where if I turn and move, it becomes very obvious that this guy is just a flat cardboard cutout guy here. And that's obviously not realistic. So to fix that, what we do is we make it always face the camera, kind of like a billboard, it's called. So if I select the guy here, and I turn on face camera when active, you'll see that now he will always rotate to face my camera like that. So from the camera's perspective, as I move, you never get a chance to see the side of the character, you know, the flat, thin edge. So it looks a lot better, and it kind of fixes that a little bit. But of course, there still is the problem where if you rotate past a certain angle, it still looks like he's just always facing the camera, which is a little creepy and unrealistic. But for most things, this does fix the problem because you're not going to have a crazy moving camera in standing setups like this. And in situations in which you do have a moving camera and you need the proper depth, that's coming in a later release where you can actually bind the footage properly to the camera view as long as your actual camera is tracked. And we can talk about that in another video. It's much more complicated, but it yields much more realistic results. Now, all that being said, there's still one more problem here. You'll see this character moves left and right within the frame. So if I were to go over here, you'll see that when I select my character, you'll see that right now he's standing in the center of the frame, which is good. That means that the pivot point is around the center. So as I rotate, it works pretty well. But as he moves left and right to an off-center position, you'll see that the pivot point is no longer directly inside his feet which kind of breaks the illusion even more because you can see it 
it makes it look like he's rotating on a door hinge, which, you know, it breaks the illusion. Because what you want is the object to be rotating around the center point, around his feet where he's standing. And there's no good way to do that because he's on a pre-recorded video clip. So what we have to do is turn on body tracking. And what this does is it'll detect the bounds of your character in your footage. Now this works entirely in real time. So even if you're using a live camera, it will do it in the exact same way. So you can see it detects the bounds of the character moving left and right, as well as the extents of his arms and things like that. So what it will allow us to do is realize or detect where the center point should be. And that essentially changes that. So it's always properly rotating in a way that respects the perspective that we're looking for here. So you can see it moves with him. So that fixes a lot of those issues, most of those issues. Now, if you're doing this with a live camera in front of a large green screen and your character moves left and right, or if you have a couple of characters, this will really help that. This will really help sell the illusion of them actually being there. Now, what's even cooler is that when you take this and you pair it with the tracking app that I talked about in the previous video, I'm going to click connect on my phone here. You get even more realistic results because you have that awesome, genuine, authentic handheld camera motion. I'm going to adjust the focus distance like this. So now we have our guy here. Now you can imagine that if this is with a live camera on a tripod and you're doing this in front of a real actor, you can move your virtual camera around that person realistically, you know, as if you're actually filming them and you get a live preview of this happening in your phone. So this is like true virtual production with zero budget using only your phone and your computer and it, it just works really well. This footage isn't ideal. You can see there's like still green around the edges, but with a proper setup, this will work really well. And so with that, thank you so much for watching. This is a good sneak peek as to what's to come with Scene Forge. A lot of exciting things. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.